variation is a part of any product process that produces any product. However, some variation is easier to control than others. So in this lecture, we'll take a look at the three different categories of variation and then look at the sources of process variation. Thinking about variation of process, take a look at these pretzels here. They do look very similar, but if you look closely, you can see differences between every single pretzel in here. They may be slightly different weights, they may be slightly different colors, they may have a different amount of salt, they may be different hardnesses. It's impossible to manufacture any two products exactly alike. The variations that you see can be large and easy to notice. So for example, color between these pretzels, one is very burned, one is very light, or they may be small. So maybe you have one more grain of salt on one of these pretzels than another. The limitations of your measuring devices, for example, your scales, uh, your colorimeters, can cause two items to appear to be exactly the same when in reality if you had a more precise instrument they would show up as different. But then the question you have to ask yourself is how much variation do I actually care about? So what you need to be able to do is measure the amount of variation that's important to you if you want to be able to control it to your specifications. There's three different categories of variations. There's within piece variation so if we look at these pancakes here on the right, within piece variation would be the color differences along the top of the pancakes. So we have different color up top here than we do on the side. It's talking about the variation within the exact same object. Piece to piece variation is differences between two or more pancakes. So maybe we have a difference of this pancake weight versus this pancake weight, or this pancake diameter versus this pancake diameter. So here you're talking about variation between two discrete pieces of product. Then we have time to time variation. And so this is variation between batches, let's say. Let's say this particular batch of pancakes that we see here has an average weight of each pancake being, oh, let's say 75 grams. The next batch that we put out may have an average weight of 77 grams. The batch after that may have an average weight of 74 grams. So we're getting variation over time in our process. True variation in a process comes from four different sources. Equipment, materials, environment, and operators. This variation can be minimized by automation, but you can't ever really completely get rid of it. It's just something that's there. It's going to occur in your process. The best you can do is control it. Equipment variation comes from tool wear, machine vibration, work holding devices, positioning, and hydraulic and electric fluctuations. So this is just talking about your equipment varying possibly from piece to piece or over time as you get wear, maybe your cutting blades get a little bit duller, maybe you start getting fouling or material buildup on the inside of your pipes. But your equipment is going to vary. Material variation comes from raw material variations, um, such as tensile strength, how much force it takes to pull something apart, ductility, or how much something can stretch before breaking. Thickness of your product, porosity, and moisture content are all things you have to consider as well. There's more variations than are seen here, but these are just an example of some. So taking a look at these potatoes right here, they probably have a difference in moisture content, they have a difference in size, they have difference in carbohydrate content. It's natural to get this kind of variation with your materials. Environmental variation comes from the environment your process is in. And so this can be controlled somewhat if you have a completely enclosed process, but you still get variations in things like temperature, amount of light, whether that's uh, artificial light or daylight, amount of radiation, so that's heat radiation, natural radiation from your environment, um, ionic radiation, that sort of thing. Electrostatic discharge can also vary. Uh, particle size, Pressure in your environment, this is talking mostly about barometric pressure, so if it's going to rain, the pressure is going to drop slightly. That may affect 
your process and that will certainly affect your humidity. So if you have processes that or products that are very sensitive to your environment, you have to work on controlling the natural variation you get in your environment, which is why some processes are fine in an outdoor environment and some need a controlled atmosphere environment to keep them more consistent. Finally, your operator can be a very large source of variation, particularly if they do not have good training and knowledge. The more training and knowledge of your process the operator has, the better they're able to reduce their own variation because they know what they're doing when they're working on process control. Physical and emotional well-being can also affect operator variation. Think about it, if you go to school when you're sick or you're stressed out, you're probably going to have a little bit more variation in your behavior and how you react to things than if you're feeling great and you are not stressed at all at that moment. And then finally, some operators have a greater tendency to fiddle around with the process than the others. So if they see the temperature going up a little bit, some operators will just wait and see what happens. Some will immediately grab for that temperature gauge and try to adjust the process right away, even if it's just a random fluctuation in temperature. Those variations that we just went over are true variations. So they are in your process, they are actually there. They are actually present regardless of how you measure them. Reported variation, on the other hand, is a result of inspection. So this can be caused by things like faulty equipment. Maybe your temperature gauge or your pressure gauge is not reading properly. Maybe it's not calibrated properly. Improper use of your equipment can also cause reported variation. So if you're not using your thermocouples properly, maybe you have them too close to the wall, maybe they're in a cold spot, um, maybe there's something else going on with them, but whatever you're doing to measure variation in your process, you're not using your measuring equipment properly. And then you can have incorrect application of your quality standards, whether you're using the wrong standards or you're trying to use your standards to in inspect quality into your product or you're doing something else that's improper with your quality standards. This can cause seeming variation that isn't actually there. So that's the important thing about reported variation. It's variation that you think is in the process but may not actually be there because something is going wrong with your data collection procedure. In general you want the variation from inspection, this reported variation, as less than one-tenth or less than ten percent of the variation from other sources, your true variation. So you don't want variation that you're getting from collecting this data to be bigger than your actual variation itself. In the next few lectures, we'll talk about how to measure this variation, how to reduce the amount of reported variation, and how to use this to get a good idea of what's going on in your process and how consistent your product is.